Safari is the only people who could do that. But it is a, a, a ancient order of, or, of origins of the first man is how I look at this. The first man was a Rasta man. That is how I look at this thing because he was supposed to be the caretaker of the earth. Mm -hmm. We as Rastas, we understand that principle of life, that, that the Most High himself is life. Water, wind, tree, grass, bird, bee, all that is life. So if the Father himself is life and he creates life itself, that means everything that is life he has experienced and sampled himself. So, ja, so for me, Ja was once the grass, the rabbit. Everything that have life, Ja experienced what it is like to be that. So when I look at Rastafari, I start at Rastafari as a creation of the human, the way one was supposed to tread the earth, with oneness, with, with nature itself. Now, saying that, we looking to start this reason about Rastafari from in the Western Hemisphere. I just wanted to clarify my stance and where, you know, in case anybody listening, I want to know where I stand on it. I just want to get that out of the way I stand on it. Me ain't telling nobody that's how they're supposed to stand, nothing. I just let you know. So forward in this reasoning from here, however long this thing go on, my stance is known. Now, we're going to look to start Rastafari from the Western Hemisphere. And we're going to start it in America, not in Jamaica. Because mm -hmm. before any song of Rastafari was uttered in Jamaica, it was being uttered in the United States, the mainland. So we have to start to let the people know that the movement of Rastafari the actual movement in the Western Hemisphere was starting in the United States. And then Leonard Howell came back to Jamaica with this information and started his own organization to teach the people about this Messiah. So we have to understand that Rastafari itself is not just something that started in the, in the Western Hemisphere, started in the East. But the movement, the movement itself is what started over here. And clarifying that it started in the United States, um, certain ones and ones learned about it, a little movement started, let them all came back home to Jamaica and planted a seed in Jamaica. And I like to say he planted a mustard seed. You know, that's how I... That, that's how I put what Lenny Howell did. He planted a mustard seed because we there are all four corners of the earth right now. And it showed a movement that came out of Jamaica, which is so strong that carried us to the four corners of the earth. And at the same time, it's a place that started this movement to have it to the four corners of the earth is being part of the problem we have with Rastafari today. So that being said, um, we're going to talk, talk about some of the early movements in Rastafari and even some who said there was Rastafari but never actually hailed the king, like we have today. So there's nothing new with how some are right now saying there's Rastafari but don't hail the king. You know, we're going to touch on that and, you know, Rasa Obadiah has some knowledge on, you know, you know, that movement and we're going to present this and present a little more information. And hope that the item enjoy, you know, whatever reasoning come out of this and whatever future reasonings we have. So whichever one of y'all wanna take the floor right now, be my guest. Mm, that's interesting that I'll, I'll, I'll come forward. This is this is Ross I Adonis to far. This is Yarden right here for short, Yarden. Um yeah. Give thanks, Ross Seymour, and also Ross Obadiah. While you was mentioning that, I, I was just showing on like the, a kind of a screen save um, the book um, Roots of Rastafari. And I mentioned this, I think, to both of the item, you know, before that this was one of the one of the books. I just want to say this on the record: there were some books by Rastafari brothers and sisters that were published out of the UK. 
Um, if anyone, I don't know if the I, Ross, Obadiah, or if any other one that hear this have any list of these books. I, I mentioned it because there were some crucial books I read back in the late, like mid to late 80s and early 90s that I don't see in circulation. And they're very, very important. They they share certain crucial principles that I don't hear being spoken of right now. But back to that other book, the one on um, Roots of Rastafari. The word, uh, the yes, Roots I have that Okay, that's a very good book. It, like in the first part, the first, I think, the introduction is by a, a woman named um, Virginia Lee Jacobs, right? And of all the books I read in Rastafari, I thought it was well balanced because the first thing it says is that I'm a paraphrase here. The brother has the book. I have a copy here somewhere, but just from what I recall, that most people are familiar with like the, the name Rastafari but they don't know whether it refers to a man or a movement. And she says the answer is both. But the best way to understand who or what Rastafari is, is to listen to the speech or the word sound of Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia. And that right there in itself, I and I will regard as the true orientation of what Rastafari is. They're familiar with Rastafari. They hear Rasta or Rastafari, but they don't know whether it refers to a man or a movement, right? And the answer is both. But then she says the best way to understand Rastafari, you know, the man and the movement, is to go to the man and listen to the word sound of the man. Haile Selassie the first, and then she goes on to kind of bring out like how Rastafari look at His Majesty, you know, as a kind of a messianic or a like a divine figure, a messianic figure, and then she connects the Ethiopian tradition, the Tawahido and the faith, and touches on some of the the key um, principles that Orthodox believers, you know, believe from that Judeo Coptic, you know, and Judeo Christian, as some call it, root. And she says, within the light of what the Ethiopian teaching says, that God and man, right, is, is one and was one. And that basically from the Christian theology, man fell, Judeo-Christian theology, man fell away. And then Christ was that, that unifying force, you know, to, to reunite us to where we fell from, like the brother said in the beginning. And his majesty is the man who is like the fulfillment of that. So it kind of explains in brief the divinity, right? Or the concept of divinity beyond what we as Rastas or different Rastafari groups or brethren and sisters might say with what the Ethiopian teaching and that root teaching, Judeo-Christian, Judeo-Coptic teaching is. So I, I point that out as a good orientation and she goes through history like you know going all the way back to the Nile Valley and going to like ancient Kush and Kush and Ethiopia connection and some of the key you know um, Kushite Ethiopian Sabian links so she gives a good history through it and then leading it forward to Haile Selassie and I find that that book is very important because it's not a deep deep history book but what it does is highlights areas of study that are very important to us and they often become discussion and conversation i hear a lot of modern like rastafari today trying to reason on but it's like they don't have this roots you know what i mean that they're going everywhere instead of turning to the roots of rastafari to say the roots of even rastafari Haile Selassie. what's his roots what does he base his reality on and i just yield on that right there just on that the man and the movement you know, hear the word of the man. You know what I mean? Like, hear the word of the Lord. You know what I mean? In other words. I have that paragraph right now in front of me. I'm going to read the paragraph that you're talking about, the introduction paragraph. Thank you. Um, it, it says, Rastafari is a name that is familiar to many, but understood by few. Most people do not know whether it refers to a man or a movement. The answer is both. At the time, the spiritual lifestyle followed by the Rastafarians has become an integral, interwoven fabric of fact and folklore. Perhaps the most revealing way to understand who or what Rastafari is, is to listen to the following words of the speech delivered 
by His Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie at Stanford University in 1968. And what the speech he was talking about is the famous war song by Robert Nestor Marley, Bob Marley, our brother, um, until the philosophy which holds one race superior than another, inferior, is finally and permanently discredited and abandoned. That until there is no longer first class and second class citizens of any nation, that until the color of a man's skin is no more significant than the color of his eyes, that until the basic human rights are guaranteed to all without regard to race, until that day, the dream of everlasting peace and world citizenship and the rule of international morality will remain but a fleeting illusion to be pursued and never obtained. Now, most people know the song and the speech. I ain't going to go no further. I just wanted to get that part in so people know exactly what speech in Stanford she was speaking about. Uh, so I just wanted to get that in there. Give that. Mm, mm. Um, um, just one more, one more. Is, there's a next paragraph or part of a paragraph where it's all about the divinity of his majesty. I think it's right there in the introduction after that paragraph. I don't have the book in front of me right now. But there's another paragraph where talk about the Messiah. I thought that was very, very accurate because Brother Obadiah was reasoning with I as well. Hopefully the I come forward, you know, but just to share why this book is a, I think it's a small book. It's a small book, but it's a, you know, we had a school. I would have it as a, a reference book, a textbook, you know. Um, you have the next paragraph where talk about the Tawahido, the divinity, the monotheistic i think it says something like that in the it's one of the paragraphs right after that if i can't find it right now it's good because we can return to that but brother obadiah yes i ras obadiah abdi you yes i um well yeah i i'm listening to the reason and it's very enlightening and give thanks. And um, the only thing I would pick up on from the conversation is that um, is that um, when we speak about um, we speak about the heritage going back, it is correct. And um, we spoke about we speaking about a few things there, right? But what I'm really saying is that from my thing is that the point where the, the, the umbrella I see more at the beginning is really the most relevant. It, it's not America really, it is Ethiopia. Mm. The, and um, when we get to the root of it, because it's, it's, what we have to understand is that there was a thought process in Ethiopia at the time. So the thought process may have been informed by other black people outside, right? And things, actions and things, you know, come into contact with other black people. But the thought process was the black world have to unite in a certain kind of way, right? And that um, that there was two ways that had to be dealt with. We had the people outside of the continent and we had the people inside the continent, see? And so, therefore, the people inside the continent, you had to get them under a kind of one system, right, to be able to, it was ahead of Europe, the European Union, but probably paying attention to the U.S. state, state model, seeing the idea was that Africa needed to unite and it managed to give them options between federal, confederal, and unitary, seeing and they chose unitary. See, so he made the first move when he said that is what thing of the chaplain just said about the Ethiopia. When he made the first move to move the name from Abyssinia to Ethiopia, in 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 real terms, that was part of Greater Ethiopia before. See, that means if Ethiopia would have been Sudan and you know, other parts, see, as well as right through central, the center of the continent in the, to some degree. So when he changed the name, 
it's not like yeah, when him say that he might go back to the ancient name, what people take it as is like him say, well, we here in this little corner, Abyssinia, we are go back to our original name. You understand? But they never said that. They say it might, might go back to, to their original name, not our. So what he was saying to Africa is, we originally were Ethiopian. You understand? So if we let go all the other titles, um, most of them have colonial titles, right? And we have a title. We are going to throw off our title and say Ethiopia. Everybody for throw off and say Ethiopia. But really, they didn't choose to do that and make a... They, 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 they then move to unitary. See, so therefore, outside, it was how do you unite, how do you unite black people? The Marcus Garvey movement had already gone ahead. It, it's the failure that had shown up. Garvey's ego, Garvey being impeached, Garvey being expelled, all kind of infighting and problem and blah, blah, in Agonia. See, and them learned from that. Most people was inside it. So between the experience outside and in, in the continent, that's what it is. So the Ayman, the movement is from His Majesty and those around him. Was that, and it's from, it's, and it actually preceded His Majesty, it started with Melanie, was that them need to unite black people. Saying, I think His Majesty really focused on it more than Melanie was more about getting the black people in from outside to help build Ethiopia. Right, but I never really trust the European. His Majesty to take it a step further, and, and that he must be them with talk about black people problems everywhere. So when we say Messiah and all these way people, the way people religious it, it can't it can't become a religion until two thousand years time. Mm. Right now, in the time where we are now, it was practical activity around the liberation of African states, you know, guerrilla bases in you know, Ethiopia interfering with colonial Europe, challenging the, the kings and the parliaments across Europe about their behavior, challenging the U.S. government about its behavior with, with the people, um, the, the lynching and the Jim Crow and the general behavior, and then challenging the colonies, the, the Europeans again about the colonies in the Caribbean and these things. See, and so they, when the green, gold and red flag went up, it went up as a, it was to, the, to these Europeans, it was an enemy flag they didn't view it as a friendly flag, seeing it was a very diplomatic flag, but they knew that it was something that was coming to undermine them and put them control over black people, seeing. So that's how big it is. What what make him who he is is not because he's born of divine blood, because things before him have divine blood. The over divine the divinity and the, the history is what it is. There's all those kings had the same divine blood. So it's not that alone make him who he is. You know, it has to be something further. So mm. it becomes like when I say the government is on his shoulder. Therefore, he have to take the responsibility of the people. So it's a practical. So before we go to spiritualizing him, what we're supposed to, be, unless we appreciate how he became really who he is, is through his works. You understand? Not just because they make called King of Kings and Lion of Judah, there's other man had this title. You understand? So this title alone doesn't make to who he is. There's something special about him. He interfered in a time when the European conquered the planet, basically. Mm. And had black people and population in a, at home and abroad. And that's what that was the environment that he came in a you know, so we have to recognize that. That they couldn't even assassinate him, they were assassinating enough leaders. We was a conquering lion and thing, and him not come like a lamb to the shop, like a sheep to the shearer. It, he practiced it. They, they assassinated African leaders by the dozen. Mm. They assassinated any former person who popped up anywhere in the world who looked like them, they would cause problems to them. They assassinate them. They, they couldn't assassinate this little man. They didn't even attempt to assassinate him. You understand? So, so this is where my head is. See? Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, Jamaica, yes, Jamaica magnified the whole thing, right? And in the beginning, it was magnified under the Eilis Lassie mission, right? And then it became kind of theoretical. 
them, they used to have a thing with them called Church Triumphant in Jamaica. If you listen to it, you see Pan Daniel Hartman's artwork, right? Um, Bongo Wato and these man them came up with this Church Triumphant thing when, when the church kind of all they took over the dinghy. Mm. It took over. It took over. It came from being ground ground nation, which it was ground nation before, and then it changed from ground in, to to bingy. Mm. And then, then and then bingy gradually became the third kind of thing. Took took that took control of it. You understand? So it became less about before the, the ground nation man would talk about everything what affected community. As well as man would have them spiritual um, invocation, but they, they, would, they would reason about everything, about social issues. But, you know, the way of gathering to do with rally is like a rally. Man turn it into a kind of church thing. Mm. See, so the movement changed. So most of the younger ones then, who is not schooled out of like the 70s, the 80s, maybe early. Uh, if, if most ones who is not schooled out of those then tend to have confusion. And even ones who school out at those times still some don't seem to really remember the doctrine. It's like it's like we are trying to change the doctrine. But the doctrine is what is strong. The doctrine is what makes us strong. The original doctrine can't be over reason. But when man try to change it and drift into certain other and create the more ideas, when them come up against some religious people, them get knocked over. And when, when somebody religious talk to them, they can't deal with it because they're reasoning on a religious, they're reasoning from a religious point. So you're becoming like a debate with a man about Allah, about Prophet, about um, Muhammad, or you argue with somebody about Jesus. You know what I mean? Whereas really, that's not where this is. Mm. Yeah, you understand? That would kind of pass out of that, really. Good point. You know what I mean? Good so point. If we focus on how his majesty is who he is, it's because it's his mission. So from Leonard Howell and them, they was liars by the last edition. So they were disrupting British government. They was disrupting British government. They was disrupting the, the authority in Jamaica. They were was, they was gathering people and creating economics, not social and welfare, independent from the colonial government. You know what I'm saying? So that's what they was doing. <laughs> mm, mm. Yeah, but and the movement continued to act like that for a certain time and then drifted away from practical and went into kind of like constant... Um, it's like man forgot the spiritual is who you are all the time. There's no special time to... When I, I, we don't grow uh, in a deductive that we have no special time when we're with God, where we got all the time. You understand? We're talking to him all the time. We're reasoning with him all the time. We meditate with him all the time. We have no special time. What we have is a mission. You know what I mean? So that's how I, when I was growing up as a youth, that's how I was taught about this. It was a mission. Rastafari aye, aye. is a mission. Mm. You know what I mean? And, 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 and the mission. And it was the same with Jesus. If you go back into the, into the, into the Jesus movement time, it was a mission around Rome and around occupation. Mm. And, and the re-establishing the true idea of it and these things. You understand? So there was a mission going on. It wasn't simply how man come turn it into some Christian thing now. But in reality at the time, it was a mission. It was a mission against the scribes and Pharisees and the way they were running the, the order, the way they were trying to educate the people and maintain the law was, was in public. You know what I mean? So it was a mission. It, it was man came to challenge. Jesus was nothing more than controversial and a challenger. You understand? The people have turned him in a thumb joke. But in reality, he was a challenger. Mm. You know what I mean? He was a challenger. He never came to play about. He's a man who risk his life and lose it. Ted had to protect himself. Peter had started to chop up man ears. Why, what did Peter, what did Peter do with a sword? That means he must have carried the sword all the time. Jesus never rebuked him for the thought, for the sword. He rebuked him for unnecessarily chopping up somebody's face. You understand? They, 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 they had to go and meet him and disguise themselves when they were meeting. These things is written in a day book where everybody are reading. But this man was in constant danger. Hiding, touching, spies, um, carry weapon, bodyguard, treasury. 
That's why the woman came to put her father in, to her father in, as to borrow money, to put a little money, the widow man. That was treasure, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that's why the business was running. When I, you know, when I hear people that person, I, I hear somebody, you understand? So this is all the Rastafari and looking and we used to say we more Christian than the Christian because we look more like Jesus Christ because of our mission. So so that's how we used to counteract them. When we used to come up being Christian, we used to say, Well, you now live like Jesus. We are live like him. This is what I'm saying, we're on a mission. Mm. We're against but so Jesus was against Roman and scribe and Pharisees and we had problems, man turn over table in a you know, you know, you know, the gambling den. Hey, you know who run gambling den? A bad man run gambling den. You know, mm. you know any part of the history. So, for you to go in a gambling den, go turn over the table. You have to be a bad man. Man, I have to respect you because you can't just talk bad man, a bad gangster. You know, just come deal with your kids. You just go and turn over gambling table. <laughs> Let me interject something real quick. Let me interject something real quick. So, 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 so that's where, that's where, just, just to say, that we are the worst of our own people to me. It's kind of got mixed up. You know what I mean? That's my perspective. It's just a perspective. Mm. Come in. Um, the, the thing you're talking about that he turn up the table, them, he go in the temple and, and turn up the whole temple as well because they're there in there disrespecting the father exactly. house. Exactly. Now, they paint, you know, they paint the Messiah Jesus as some kind of pretty boy, you know? Yeah. Like he's Passive. some kind of gallus. Yeah, like he's some kind of gallus or something, some pretty boy. No, <laughs> from my understanding, this man was like a man like me, like a school exactly. face type of man, like, you know, like if you exactly. see me in public, you ain't gonna see me smiling, and why he's not a guy smiley type of guy. I got exactly. a serious look on my face all the time. <laughs> but even my empress, when I first started a deal with my empress, our family were asking she, I mean, because they said the man don't smile every time I see the man, the man looks serious like he about to kill somebody. Exactly. <laughs> but this is how the Messiah looked. The Messiah looked like a man like me. He wasn't coming exactly. to you and smiling and skin teething in your face and thinking, no, this is a serious looking fella with a screw face. He ain't exactly. come to play with you. The narrative that they give me about this man is a false narrative. Exactly. They make this man seem like some kind of, you know, you are acting wrong with provision and thing, knocking on people, don't give them orange and apple and thing. This is this is how they got this man looking. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and remember, remember you know, when Owen when Owen came up, what they used to do from Pinnacle was feed them used to in a Pinnacle, it was all the different stuff. It was welding, carpentry. There was no poor people in Pinnacle. Right, and the poor people they used to go into Kingston and feed, give people money and food. You understand? So that's the same thing. And then part of the white man, them red, because you used to have white people in a Jamaica who had the, the, the plantations. Everybody that's a colonial man. Right? The man that mm-hmm. really the plantation and part of those people. They, that's why that's why the government end up come down on them because them them did a bad up people. Too. You know what I mean? Them the bad of the white man, them who had the plantation. Well, there was things going on. You know, just like Henry. There's a man called Henry. We need to understand these man them. And these man them are locked and the other. Them man they right. You know, kill two British soldiers for him troops come down him, him family come down from America. Come into Jamaica, set up gorilla camp and shoot two British soldiers. Right, that's the pre prelude to Jamaica getting independence. That's when the British decided, you know, something, we need to get the hell out of here. You know, see, because they had to hang people. And and Henry nearly get hanged. Mm-hmm. And his son and them came from America, like the American soldier came in a America with American uniform and he soon and set up for the camp. And and then shot some British people. You know what I mean? And them hunt them down and hang them. So these Henry is 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 a big partner of this movie. These men them not even did carry luck. But they was they was part of the Ethiopian mission. That's why if you notice most of the old time people who did, would dealing with the with Ida Selassie, they always call themselves something Ethiopian. Mm. True, true. So all of them had the name Ethiopian Masonic, is Ethiopian salvation, 
It, it was always Ethiopian something. There was all on the Ethiopian mission. You understand? And and and, and Rastafari, that's Rastafari. I mean, even the man does say Rasta back in the 50s and things, but Ethiopia mission. But then it's like, it's like, forget, wash, wash the, wash the, wash it. The Coptics was in the midst of, they was kind of saying Ethiopia too. But they might be to up on some different, the um, different for Ethiopia, with, with the medicine not really being relevant. But they were still saying Ethiopia. All of them, if you know, this even the power used to them call them Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah. Because I know the man who come from the very old time, he still use the name Ethiopia. Because they were all part of the movement. But then you get diversions come out like Coptic, the Bobo, Ethiopia, 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 Ethiopia,
Uh, the other day I seen them saying his son was saying that um, Alice Lass is not that. And, and people talking about it like it's some relevance. I'm just saying, what relevance has that got to do with me? When I, you are telling me, say, you want Alice Lass to come to my God. If Alice Lass will come to my God, he got it. Me and the... Me and Russell Adonis had a little reason on this uh, when this force happened. It's, it's like biblical. Remember, you know, the same person who started people is dealing with the Bible. And the Bible is written in the Bible that he who unbelief himself shall be exalted. He who exalted himself shall be brought up. But he highly said, I said, come on and say, I am God. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have a lot of him. You understand? He's, exactly. He shall exalt himself. That's not. The way in this time. See, Point. Jesus never come to anybody saying with God. Right? All, he never even saying as the son of God. He never even saying as the son of God. Mm, it's, it's funny how the, the, man, the, the first word to body is a of a person. Right? And, and, and it's not, not have nothing to do with man. All the way through the books, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the key pages, man, keep telling you saying as the son of man. Isn't that funny? He keeps telling you that he's the son of man. I hear somebody else are saying he's the son of God. But when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, every time Jesus went to mouth, he said, I have the son of God, the son of man, the son of man, the son of man, the son of man. He not stop calling himself son of man. And it's written all through the four books, and yet people still, I would say, son of God. Yeah. You understand? Because, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, because you know who God is too. Because the part of the problem with Rastafari is well, that some of the Rastafari's story didn't even know the fundamental thing. Why, why Leonard was the part of Right, and people said he was mad at the time. It's because what he was saying is that man is bad. Right? And him is the highest man. You understand? But man himself is God. So when, when he's saying that, when he's saying, well, this is the highest man. You know what I mean? So it's like people, people, Psalms are going to say, I've said you are gods, but you are all with them. It's guy like the people from far like about this and that. It's written there. It's written in Genesis where it's there. They have become like one of us. After after the, the serpent, they tell you, say, you're going to come like that. Then then you're going to eat the fruit, and then and then come back and say, they have become like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we are gods. You understand? These things is quite is clearly written, and people read them, but we get caught up in, it's like, I got thing that swirl around my head. And so <laughs> the whole thing of Rastafari, you know, was, it's funny because the doctrine of Rastafari it fits the see where the emperor makes about the Bible. Yet, yet the doctrine of Rastafari was created without any reference to the speech about the Bible. But what he says, he fundamentally says, you can find the truth to yourself. Hmm. Because in Ethiopia at that time, there was only the priests in the church who had Bible. The people used to come and they used to just read to them and tell them what it means. Nobody never had Bible in their house. You understand? So what is highest last it did, it was a rebellious behavior towards the church. The church wasn't overly happy with it. I know you're going to get man um, parishioners going to start rack up to them and question them about what I said. You understand? So, he said, you can find the truth for yourself. For yourself. And then he said, for my part, I glory in the Bible. You know, there's two ways that you can look at that. In glory in it, in the, in the book itself, and what he learned from it. And he actually glory in there too. He means glory inside the book there. You understand? And so, you for find yourself in it. Everybody's supposed to find themselves in the book and then, and then find themselves now doing what they're supposed to do. Mm. No, because all, right. all the man Words sound right. power, my lad. Words sound yeah, power right all, there. All, all the man that knew and read about was doing their thing then. They was active. <laughs> That's why we read about them. If they never active, we wouldn't read about them. Nothing be written. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have to be doing something. I know that to be in their book, but it's a whole work, yeah. you know. I've been talking with Nebula for now. But nobody will read about him here. Whether they're good or bad, they have to be doing something. And, and Otherwise, no, they wouldn't, and, wouldn't write about them. And, and note this. They didn't write it down first and then get busy. They first got exactly. busy and then wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
exactly. I'll come by your dry boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. But something I want, something, some work of being yeah. done. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> it wasn't a stage play. It wasn't a stage play. Nah, it was. Nah. nah, it became a stage play play to try to teach others. But what the item saying is fundamental. I picked up what uh, enough, yo. Brother Obadiah came through and, and, and really like laid some really principles right there. You know, um, that many of the core principles and it, it becomes an education thing. Notice the first thing his majesty do was literacy campaign. The literacy, people forget about the literacy campaign, right? And then the education, more general education. And as I mentioned, educating those who might have been susceptible to certain forms of social abuses that some might call slavery or exploitation, having those classes educated. You know what I'm saying? Having those classes educated to balance it. And even the rebellion you mentioned to the church. Because remember, the church is the body, according to the Bible, right? According to the narrative, and and Christ is the head. You know what I mean? So what, what his Massey did was to kind of democratize, so to speak, um, the teaching and the Bible, giving the people access to the scripture, which you know what will happen is that the people now know what the scripture says when they see the priest does something that seems to be against it. He can check him now because he know where to go to. And that's why right now the Halas Lassie Bible, for those who know that, that we've been distributing it under the line of Judah, you know, banner, the mission. Um, it's no longer being printed in Kenya or East Africa. I just want to point that out. It's no longer being printed. We're trying to get it reprinted like a hard copy of it and restore His Majesty's foreword to it again. The same speech you mentioned about one of the speeches on the Bible, one of them is one of them that's found in his preface. So even right now that the church has been rebellious, the Ethiopian church, not everybody, but 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 much of those who are, I often say the true church and the professing church, the true church, there's a true church of ones who still hold to those, those core principles. But the church today shows you the rebellion, bringing in the white Jesus, Roman Catholic images, suppressing the, the, church, the, church, the church. The church went from the first show of them colors to the dark. Boom. Right. This is, right. I, I, I know this, I live and experience it. Right. We was young youths around here, and we saw it, we saw it. That's how I know Monday for uh, Abba Ishak, Monday for we used to call him, right? We saw it happen, right? We didn't understand the politics in Ethiopia, but we see how man came and came to literally and came to trim off on these things, and we see the elders, them around, and trim them here in the church, and the rest of us just put some fire on it, and um, younger kids, and we just left around it, stopped dealing with that. Right, so we saw it happen, right? You executed the other bus, right? You executed him. You took out the Judea out of the, the church because you couldn't in the Indies because the church was promoting the kings and you can't promote the glory of the kings by you, you come to remove kings and execute royal family, right? So you can't have nobody looking for your king, right? So that, that had, the Judea had to come out, them take it out, the church take it out. We put in Monk Mikkel um, and, his, and, his, and his the people them from, from Wallo. Monk Mikkel come from Wallo and turn Tekla Hymenat, right? And and him coming, the Derg was the Amengis to him from Wallo to, right? It was, that was only Amara, Amara thing. It was Amara thing, right? That's what that was. It was Amara against Amara, right? And them, what they did with the church, right? Them changed up the church. So the, the edict of the church was changed from there to become more Christian driven and to not to function until this, the day the day of its star and not to function until the, 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 the Judea and this thing and to push take that out because it was the dirt and the dirt don't worry about no kings. And even up to today, the they're still saying they don't recognize the Kebron of God. That's rubbish. The original Ethiopian church recognized the Kebron of God. You understand? So I can't really support these kind of institutions because what people forget is that churches have committee. And the committee can sit down and make decisions. You see? So I can't sit down and do nothing like that when it comes to my when you have faith thinking that somebody going to sit down and vote. Um, how I, my faith mm -hmm. is my decision about my faith. That can't work. You know what I mean? It, 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 that can't work. So That's an important 
that point. Just, just on that point right there that you mentioned right there about how they take out the, um, first of all, also what they've done too, His Majesty's Bible that was published in 61, um, officially, there's a speech from 1962 where it says the revised Amharic, the revised Bible, the revised Amharic Bible speech. That speech is the actual foreword, right? And Ross Seymour um, McLean, he also was pushing that from the UK as well. That's all shocked, like at, back, back in the 1990s, I think 94 or 5, when some of the item came for one of the conventions for the Federation and everything over by, I think, Lion's Den or that place on one of those big streets over there. Anyway, I think Atlantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he brought it. That's the first time I think I met the man, but I was seeing ones like reprint his his printing and he had printed that part right there, the one that's all in Amharic. And he actually recognized and identified that with the Bible. Now what the church has done is they printed another Bible, which is similar to the Bible, but in some areas they, 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 they reprint it certain sections. You know, like you ever see something like that's printed and if they take out the text and they retype in the text, you can see that it's yes. different because it's darker. It looks like more, yes. like, you know what I mean? It looks like it's a patchwork. So even what the church has done even further is tamper with the translation from the good is and compare with the Hebrew in order to Greekize it. Because every place that they made revisions, especially in the New Testament, check this out too. It's only in the New Testament that they have made these revisions. I have a copy of it. What's his name? Had brought it forward back in the 90s um, to God. And I bought a copy of that because it has some of the apocryphal books there. So the apocryphal books haven't been touched. The Old Testament hasn't been touched, but the New Testament has been has, has been like overwritten and everything. So what you mentioned about the Kevin and the guests, I think it's very important that the audience and anybody who hears that understand how fundamental a rebellion that is by saying that they do not recognize the Kevin and the guests. You know, that's history. That's like saying history. You don't recognize the 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 history. <laughs> and that makes it that makes it dirt. But you say that you're dirt. You, 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 have, you haven't corrected yourself. You said what well, you're supposed to do is correct yourself back where you was when you when you execute Abba Theopolis. That's what you need to do. You can't you can't you can't you're still carrying on with the dirt business. That when you believe that. You I mean, you're a fraud. Oh, but you know what it is? It's a repentance. I was talking about this some years ago and not speaking religiously, but seeing Ethiopia is influenced by her beliefs that they need to repent. But the problem is this. Suppose we're of the generation like them. We would be more of the generation that were very young and it was our parents and our parents' parents who probably were on one side or the other. You know what I'm saying? So it becomes difficult for, I would say, the rank and file people because the leadership is not willing to acknowledge, like the present synod or committees or whatever, they're not willing to acknowledge because this is why they had two archbishops ruling at one time. Think about that for a moment. That is all against real canon law because it's a way of saying that we're going to accept the good and the bad. It's like what people are trying to do today. Let us all get together. It says, my, exactly. it says the enemies of the Lord will be destroyed altogether. So that means the enemies of the Lord are going to be united. That's why you got to watch who you unite with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you might be caught. It says, come out of her, my people, so you don't partake of her judgment. You know? <laughs> Step aside. Exactly. Step aside. Everyone, we have to care for everybody. True, true, because they have, you have to recognize that, like, we have our issues, whether we come out of what part of the diaspora from 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 North America, South America, or the, the Caribbean, that's part of the Americas, you know what I mean? We all have our individual kind of like, you know, like our, our the people that we, we most know, you know, like our backgrounds. So now you, we know how complex that is. You know what I mean? Whether being a black American or being from Jamaica or being from elsewhere. Can you imagine with Ethiopia with all those different peoples? That's all we see. It. That's the background of what we see today. And the modern Rastafari doesn't seem to be understand really the, the history. 
like so like when we reason about what's going on like the RMOs and this and that and Amhar cuz we don't really understand the history of it you know what no, I mean because people have been part of it people have been part of it with nostalgia ah. when, when they, <laughs> there you go the nostalgia is coming i don't use the word religion because maybe I should say organized religion or, or influence religion because what happens right it, it's like our idea of Ethiopia has been built all around the emperor mm. but mentally we didn't see the rest of the country some people they visit here and they go to Shatamani they go to Addis the infinity they will go north they go towards the, king, the kingdoms like that they don't even see the rest of the country you know, they, they don't read when they're under the Empire. Somebody was telling me about Amara and why I'm supposed to support Amara. And I reminded them that I made a speech for that in his, in his thing for the, the pagan, the Muslim, and the Christian. Thanks. And everybody. You mm. understand? So, mm. yes, sir. You never tell me you say that because you're pagan, it means that you're not an Ethiopian. Oh, yeah. This is what the person was telling me is that. To be a Ethiopian, you have to look and be a certain type of way. And it was obviously putting it more around the church, you know. But, you know I mean, I explained to them that there's people in a Ethiopian who are working in space. <laughs> you understand? Know, who have them live with some Thanks. big something and then you make Thanks. it look like they're there, just chucked out of Shakamani, not far from Shakamani South. So, the point what I'm making is that this is how we have to understand who the Empress stands for. When, when Italy come in, the spearsman them and the tribesman them were the others too. They came to answer call to defend them country and bring them spear. You understand what I mean? I it. Mm -hmm. man to make it look like it's only certain people, is Ethiopian and all these kind of things. We need to understand the country. If we did pay more attention to the people who was around, like Shashamani, we would have probably not made some mistakes. Mm. But we're not, we're, not, we're not studying the place. We just kind of, we just kind of, Ethiopia, you know, and it's you hit it. Class, you, know, you hit that it. That kind of mad man, more than to really understand that it's people. Devil did it, and good and bad did it. You understand? So the people got it with that kind of fantasy, and we're not paying no attention to all the different people, them historical problem and the grievances and who are like who and who is this and who is not trustworthy and who is you know what I mean? Mm. All kind of people. It's just people. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 you make a good point. Like, you've turned it into Zion. We've turned Africa. If Africa was Zion, how the hell did we get here? Because at the end of the day, we would have had to experience hell up there if we get here. You understand? Because somebody cut your, your four parents mm. from somewhere, marched from thousands of miles to the coast and in a horror, and then kept them in horror at the coast before they got abandoned the ship. And who pay us to be here today. Some people went through that. It didn't start when the ship started to sail out, you know, it started from you know the continent. Mm. People, people being hunted down. I, I hear about tribes who used to go and put themselves in the middle of lakes to keep keep away from slave catcher tribes. You know what I mean? It was no your business. You had some tribes who had to hide, remove themselves. From, from the arena to try to make it difficult for the slave catcher trade people them to catch them. And it was them one other there when looking people who see them color skin. I do it. Mm, you understand? Mm, so mm. We, 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 I don't take none of this. So we turn Africa into Zion. We turn that. And that's why we haven't got there because if we did deal with it practically. You hear the white Jews, I tell you, say, Israel is, is them 2,000 years, them have the rights. And none of them people have no, no, no idea. But they say that. But what they do, after them tell you, say, them have this religious right. You don't hear no more about no religion after that. You know, <laughs> money, <laughs> build army, build farm, grow food in a desert, mm. pull, take water from a place, turn salt water into fresh water. I got them turn it into big woods. Sickly man, mm. you understand? You know, they tell you all of that. When they're going to justify it, why they have control of it, they tell you about 2,000 years and this stuff and the other. And then after that, it's, 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 it's practical. It's, it's practical. It's practical after that. In other words, they, they give the religious part for the world for the religious folks. You well, know what I mean? They give the religious we, part. <laughs> we don't. We try to live out the religion thing, the idea, the <laughs> connection to Africa. 
the, instead of the nostalgic connection end and then we, when we get there it's not we are in nostalgic where we want to go now we're here let's get down to practical business mm, yes we go up there with the nostalgic and then we start to live nostalgically we, we floated in from outside all of us common sense we used to have outside we leave it outside with it. people who was business people turn fool as soon as them touch our people and start talking and say you to yourself bloody hell what are you doing <laughs> America, Britain, you have your business and you are educated. You, know, you reach the truth and all of a sudden you start to have all kind of fairy, fairy talk. You know, you know, I'm doing it now and, it's like, you know, and you know, people talk something and you say, but shit, you never know as so your parents, your poor parents get whipped and beat and raped and buggered down right here, right mm. to the devil. Mm. Mm. And, and it was running slaves in, but people forget to, slavery was taking place in Africa because they were growing cocoa and doing all these things. They had plantations in Africa. So these African too were pretending like them is not slave. None of them was slave in Africa. And mm. this is another thing where we need to turn this thing around with the slave thing, because they've been dissing us. They love disrespect when called a slave, right? They to understand that they were slaves in their own continent, right? Because mm. white people had plantations in Africa. Cocoa plantation and all kind of plantation was right there too. Mm -hmm. So they, enough of them were doing mining, just like all them are doing mining now in the Congo. They was doing it mining when, when slave time, white man did have man down there. So one thing, I don't want anybody fantasizing. You know, they were slaving shit people there. Mm -hmm. And we know that from when you know the history of Belgium with, with the Congo and King Leopold, that's an extreme version of it. But it, that's what the Europeans was doing. They was up there taking out minerals and doing shit. You think the people who was dig out gold and diamonds in slave time was getting paid? Mm -hmm. they're, barely, they're barely getting paid now. Yep, 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 yep. You know what I'm saying? So these kind of fantasies, right? Even the African them always there. They need to shut up them out because they're not being honest. Their four parents was in slavery, you know, for them right there. As well as us like who got flipped out. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to take more talk from them. We have to come out of this nostalgic shit. Right? We know when you land in Africa, um, the little hands, man, they, 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 um, with the two hands, there too. You know what I mean? Everybody's there. <laughs> the same things work outside is right there too. It's flying on the plane with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you I mean, that's an important point. Fantasy. Important point you're making right here, just for all the people to hear it, is getting out of the nostalgia. The nostalgia, I think that's a big, big point that we focus on, as you mentioned, we focus on Hala Selassie, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To the exclusion, I mean, it's understandable, maybe, especially for the first, second, maybe even generation, but now we have to get past the nostalgia. You know, we can have the nostalgia on those times we have in a celebration. You know, that can be the, like the Ethiopians do, like other mature peoples do. Like when we have a celebration, you know, like right now we're in the Purim season, like for we who observe in a black Yehudi Beta Israel way, right? Um, so we can then then recall the past or, you know, have this have this moment to nostalgize, nostalgize, you know what I'm saying? But in the practical application, have to get to the practical practice. And it's a good analogy you meant you, you made. But the point you said about getting out of the nostalgia, I hope the people and the youths pick up on that. Not saying that nostalgia is bad, but it's like it's like ninety percent nostalgia. You know what I'm saying? It's like ninety percent nostalgia it's got, it's got all so the time. Mm. It's got so much in nostalgia because you can be nostalgia all the time. I'm not saying the person is not to be nostalgic. I could I can be being practical and still be nostalgic at the same time. Because that's in your mind. That's how you feel. Yeah, I'm in Africa. What a nice feeling. But I'm still getting down to graft and doing what I'm supposed okay, to do. Okay, okay. Good correction. Yeah, well, Good correction. Sometimes yeah. the nostalgia becomes... It's like that is what takes over totally. And, and the other part of it is not, not active. You know what I mean? So you're not, it's not taking... You can't take nostalgia out of people because we've been away from there for, for many hundreds of years. But... While we're being nostalgic, we've got to be practical and realistic and, and, and really understand what it is that we're, what we're doing. Otherwise, we're just going to keep getting knocked. It's an important point. Thank you. Thank you for the correction on that right there. It's the clarity. In other words, it's not wiping out. And I, I wasn't trying to say to wipe out the nostalgia, you know, but to keep it, you know, keep it in check. Because while you were speaking, I had this thing. I think I shared it with you before. 
back in the 19, early 1907. What is this? It's from 19, this right here. I'll share it with the item. Well, it's printed here 1922. Right from the Negro in Chicago, a study of race relations and the race riot. But this right here is so-called propaganda literature. Get this, propaganda literature. Because propaganda can be good or bad, but propaganda literature used by Abyssinians in recruiting followers. Right, and this goes back to 1903. And when you see how it's, this is a facsimile of it. It says the Lion of Judah Treaty between the king of Ethiopia and the United States. Now I want to let everyone know this was brokered basically by black people from, from the Americas and the Caribbean that went forward, right? And conferred with Minulik, you know, the Minulik II, Dagmawi Minulik. And when you look at the flag here, this is, remember, this is 1903, right? You see there's the Ethiopia line of Judah flag with the line of Judah in the center. And then there's one with the star of David on it that has in it in the Hebrew right writing in the center, Sion or Zion. And then it has the it's like a white flag with the two the two dark, I guess the two blue rivers, yeah, between the two rivers. My point is this that this was between black people here in the West, right, linking forward, getting on ships and everything, making action, going to Ethiopia, conferring and reasoning with Minulik. Minulik the second battle of Ottawa Minulik right and of course tied to there no doubt you know but reason with Emperor Minulik and when they came forward the United States through that interaction made his first treaty with Ethiopia but on the on, on, on the on the on the on the document it shows a flag that is today people will call it the state of Israel but I want to show people here, this is black people. This is Ethiopians, Hebrews, Ethiopians at home and abroad. You know what I'm saying? I just want to point that out because this was about commercial relations between the two countries and showing that our ancestors, you know, were able to make these great links. Of course, they didn't, they wasn't able or they didn't fully capitalize on it. But just to show what the brother is mentioning about commercial, our ancestors were looking at commercial relations between the two countries and the black peoples had the had the um, the the cat's meow. You know what? You know, what I mean, in other words, it was in our hands because, you know, that link with Ethiopia, even in the West and America was done by, by our black ancestors here in the Americas and Caribbean. You know what I'm saying? And then to signify it. It said it's showing the flag, right, of Ethiopia, you know, with the green, yellow, and red from the top to the bottom. And then what later on the white European Jews would take. If you go back and look at the ideas for a flag, they have a whole bunch, like about, I've seen about 20 to 50 different concepts they had going over the years, like in the 1900s, you know what I'm saying? Like in the late 1900s, you know, like, like maybe like around 19, I think they first started, to, maybe 1920 or 30. But here from 1903, for we black people, we already have that flag. So I'm just saying how many things that the brothers have been mentioning that that land over there was our land, you know, is our land, you know, and our ancestors already knew that, not just Ethiopia in the South, but also recognizing you know what I mean? The land to the north. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to point this out to the folks right here, the people that when people look at that flag, it's like our things have been taken. You know, like you're speaking about the white, the European Jews, the white Jews. And this is proof that they even took the flag. You know, there's, there's actual hard evidence because they did not have any idea of what they wanted their, their state of Israel flag to be. When they finally chose it, it was the same thing that the commandment keepers, the same flag of the commandment keepers who, like you said, named themselves Ethiopian. They said royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews commandment keepers. And they were one of the first groups to say that, yes, Haile Selassie is uh, a descendant of, of David and of Israel. And he is that King David on the throne. And he is the head of us over here. Right. And, and that was from a Jewish or Judaic perspective. So I pointed out because all this was long before the Holocaust, about almost almost almost, um, you know, 40 years to something like, you know, 40, 40 years from this poster. 
And then from the time of his majesty, we can say within the range of like 30, 30 years before that. You know what I'm saying? So if we don't get to practical application, a lot of things is taken from us. You know, not just the music. We talk about how, how music has been taken from us or how inventions have been taken from us. But if we don't get practical about it, you know, not just look back and say, look what our ancestors did, but look what we can do now. You know, I just want to say that there as I share this on the screen with ones and ones. I think that, I think I sent this both to the both the eye them, but I'll, I'll share it with the eye so you can see this right here. It's just a very interesting document, you know, and has a lion of Judah right there boldly, you know what I mean, <laughs> between the two flags. Let me segue into this paragraph here. Let me segue into the paragraph. No, I didn't want to bring it out earlier. I figured I'd save it. Wait, 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 from the same oh, book? Yeah, from the same book, right? Yeah, from the same book. Yeah. You know how I move, like you know how I move already, man. Let me, let me know. <laughs> Come with it, man. Take it, I just, I just keep my mouth hush, hush my mouth for a while to save this for later time. I know you toasted. Can't, can't give all the food one time, man. I know you toasted, not boasting. Go true, go true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, from the same book that we read from all the uh, roots of Rastafari, it says to understand. The Rastafari movement is to understand the life of Haile Selassie, who is, in fact, the in the magnet in in a magnet Rastafari. Haile Selassie is regarded by Rastafarians as the Masonic figure, a direct descendant of the Judeo-Christian tradition. He claims his ancestry from King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. At the same time, fundamental to his spiritual makeup is the Orthodox Christian. No, no, no come again, come again, come again. I, I got my copy. The, copy. The, the Orthodox. You, you, you the have... makeup of the art. Orthodox Christian. Well, you, wait, wait, wait. Your copy says Orthodox Christian, not Coptic Christian? Yeah. Mine says Coptic Christian. Go ahead. Mine says, is the Whoa. Coptic Christian belief of monophysitism. Go go, go through, go through. Bro. Apologies. Yeah. Yes, mm. <laughs> or the, of monophysitism or the dwelling existence of the divine in each of us. Wait, 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 hold on for a moment, hold for a moment, hold for a moment, not to cut the eye again. It doesn't say all the indwelling existence of Christ in each of us? No. Okay, go through, go through, bro. Go, we're going to compare notes later. Different <coughs> yeah, different translation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but always good to, to compare and contrast and see what is said to understand even in better ways, so that's a good thing still. Wow. Say so Rastafari is... He said, Rastafari is, no, he said, Rastafari is God. A proclamation often taken literally by many Rastafarians who refer to their Messiah as Jah. Wow. You always finished that way? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mine says, yeah, in this sense, Rastafari is God. But it's a very important point. Like, I was waiting forward to this. That's why I went and grabbed my copy where it says at the same time fundamental to his spiritual makeup here it says is the coptic christian i know the brother and i or brother obadiah have been speaking about like the judeo-coptic but here it says the coptic christian belief of monophysitism you know almost like god and man as one or the indwelling existence of christ and your copy says of of the divine yeah here it says the indwelling of of christ in each of us that's the point that Brother Obadiah was making right there. This brings out more of the essence of what we, we call Orthodox or Coptic or Tawahido teaching. That God and man, God and man is one, but there was like a breach. And theologically, it's like the Christ in this form of Yeshua or Jesus. He restores that breach. But that breach now makes us... That oneness, it, it restores us to that, you can say that God. That's what it says, in this sense, Rastafari is God. So in the sense of the Orthodox teaching, the Judeo-Coptic teaching or Orthodox teaching, 
It, but, but when it says a proclamation, often taken literally, that's an important point there by many Rastafarians who refer to their Messiah as, 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 as Jah. You know, and it's interesting because the brother was saying that b beyond the spiritual aspects or getting too caught up in the spiritual aspects, like keep that personal, is like the more practical application. Like early on when when he was speaking about um, the, pract the practicality of liberating the people. In fact, I don't know if you have this fear, if you count like one, two, three, four, five if you go to the paragraph the paragraph right here um um that says in their insistence this is speaking about how orthodox rastafarians interpret Hala Selassie's humility as further proof of his divinity then it says in this in their in their insistence of Hala Selassie's divinity zealous zealous rastafarians overlook the principle of mon monophysitism. Now, not to get all into that, but basically that's to say the Tawahido, like the oneness, God and man is one, right? That was so much a part of the emperor's belief structure. Haile Selassie believed that the divine and human natures of Christ are one. And although he acknowledged the God within himself, he also acknowledged this as a reality available to all, right? Right. And then the next paragraph now brings it to the practical application of this God, Messiah, deliverer. Rastafari has played a key role in the awakening of both spiritual and political consciousness among blacks. I highlighted that verse right there. But, but then it starts to bring it more to that, like waking up blacks, uh, identifying as Ethiopian and coming the Marcus Garvey movement and everything else. And then it goes into like the liberation movement in Africa, you know, so it's kind of showing that there is a spiritual component, but his majesty is not only awakening the spiritual, the spirit, the true spirituality among black people, but also us politically, you know what I mean? To deal with the social issues. You know what I'm saying? The mission, as the brother said, the mission. You know, so I just want to share how the book is well written because it, it doesn't neglect the spirituality, but it doesn't overemphasize. It says, now, you see the spirituality? Here's how it manifests <laughs> to do do something for humanity and black people. I just want to share exactly. that. Exactly, because um, going back to your interview about the, um, the, the Israel things. Um, do you remember that the biggest settlement in Ethiopia took place prior to Muslim, right, of people from outside um, of Ethiopia, right? So there was there was Hebrew, most of them who settled, right, black Hebrew, being, uh, and that's um, Mr. Ford, Ford. Right, and his, his settlement, and it was it was interrupted by the Italian invasion. And I remember some of those people who returned from Ethiopia when after the invasion, his his, his people who is certified federation. So, mm. um, the whole Israel thing was there already, and with as I said, Melanie started certain things, right? And and there's an Ethiopian movement. Thing. And what's happened is that people have forgotten that it was an Ethiopian movement. Mm. I'm trying to change into other things that's not Ethiopian movement. See? So the mission started and then the emperor took up the mission and, and redefined it a certain way. Right? And it's, it's Ethiopian. See? So that was, it's not necessarily as like, like the topic of necessarily the type of geographic about the place there. It's centered around there. But it's still is black people everywhere. Mm. Really, it's a target. You understand that that was the mission, and that's what went into America and then bounced between America and Ethiopia, and then end up jumping to Jamaica and then spread all over the place. You know what I mean? So mm. what what I'm saying is that um, those things is really and this is to understand that we are the poor of the things, right? Um, these things was already active 
So the repatriation movement, again, we become known in Jamaica for blowing that trumpet, right? That come out to move the because it persists throughout the, the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s. And so, but that trumpet of repatriation was already blown and people had already started to say, and that's where that idea came from. Of settling. Came mm. from Ford. You know what I mean? So that's where we are with the, with the, with the movement. It's always about the movement. Now the word spirituality, the way the, way, the way the book mentions spirituality kind of separates things. It's like on one level we say God and um, man is one. But then sometimes we say that and then another time we separate it. You know mm. what I mean? We, we, like we say, we say it, God and man is one, but then another time we say spirituality and something. But if everything that's coming out of us is coming from the same source, mm. which is the same God and man, you know what I mean? So whatever <laughs> it is, it's still coming from the same source, whether it's practical, whether it's somebody thinking about future matters, still coming from the same source. So there is no, there isn't anything, there is no spiritual matter really. And when when she says about the God thing, take it to the extreme, that's not really anything to do with his majesty directly, right? Whether people take it to, to, to be a God thing, is the first thing we have to recognize with his majesty is what he's doing for us as black people. So in America, Europe, in Europeans, leaders, Kings, queens, talking the governments about what they do across Africa and the colonies, putting up freedom fighter bases, initiating the OAU, tackling the US government about lynching and, and, and Jim Crow. You know what I mean? Those things is worse. So much that the Green World and Red Flag was seen as a threat in America, it was seen as a threat in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the colony, seen because of it. that work. That, that was a work. That, that, that should have brought an assassination of the you see what I'm saying? So what we have to understand that that's 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 practically what it is first. Now, when how people come to see us the Almighty God our God, that now comes down to them. Right? Because when it comes down to that everybody's got their own different opinions about God. So some people see God as something outside of themselves. Some people see God as inside of themselves, but still outside of themselves. Some see God as equal to them and, and, and them greater, and some people think that them and God is the same. You know what I mean? So mm. when you're talking about God, mm. you just use the word, so it becomes so complicated personally. Right? So it's obvious that if you are an individual and you believe that human beings are God created, which man is God, and that man is a creator, and man creates things different from other animals. He must create the likeness and the image of he who created him. That means he must have, a, he must look like and shape like the same, right? That he hid himself in the garden from God. So you can't hide from God in the garden if it's a spirit or it's invisible. You can only hide from something that's visible and, and tangible. Mm. And, and that thing, art, where are you? That means there's something I know where you're there. So this all sit knowing God and God in everything doesn't know where Adam and Eve are at that moment. You understand? Have you eaten from the trees? A question. Is this what I'm saying? Mm. They have become like God. These words are fundamental, little words that mean so much. But people pay little attention to them because they get caught up in the, in the... The one thing where Jesus tell us, this is what he says, as it was in the beginning, Right, this is one of his favorite quotes that people need to pay attention to. It was something we learn as Rasta you. We learned this one fast. It become one of our catchphrases. As it was in the beginning, so let it be now forevermore. So whenever anybody comes, we always refer to the beginning. That was our sneak spot. So if you quote some other man anywhere else in that history, but well, we carry it to the beginning. This is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. as it was in the so as it was in the beginning, we're gods. Mm -hmm. Right? As it was in the beginning, you have a higher, higher man than a next man. So when some people free it, we say, I just want to start back and look at something else. But that, that's up to them. You know what I'm saying? Some mm -hmm. people just want to say, I just want to And think and understand that some people can 
to understand why Jesus is bad. Because they don't see him as a man. They kind of see him as a man and can kind of have some kind of idea in the remains. So when people say Jesus is bad and God is bad, when you say, how is that situation? Is God all of a sudden they break out? You know what I mean? How can you say, how is that situation? But back in the day, some people say, how can you say, say Jesus is bad? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was, it was the world Jewish community. It was the world Jewish community. It was up um, at the Hebrew community that was accepted with Jesus. You know what I mean? So this is the kind of nonsense. You know, um, Moses was God. You know, at the time because when Moses disappeared, the people get confused and start believing. So if now I come back and they know what they're going to do. And we are, we are, who's going to save them? But they wasn't talking about anybody more than Moses. They wasn't saying, well, God, they are going to do it. Come out there and say, if Moses is not here, who are we going to help you? They need Moses. <laughs> and then because they don't know Moses, they make a golden car and create another God mm. other than Moses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the, the golden car is created because Moses is not here. You understand? Mm -hmm. So Moses must be a God. Otherwise, why are you going to make calf to worship the calf and then try to help that the calf will help you? Interesting point you make. It's, it's interesting you point you made that how we look at or how in this Western, this white Anglo-Saxon Protestant wasp, you know, culture that we're in, how they look at God doesn't match the way that even the translation of God in the Bible be. You know what I'm saying? The way that they see God in religion is different than the God you really see in the Bible, according to what's written there. Like you said, Moses was a God to Pharaoh, Exodus chapter 7. I made you a God to Pharaoh, Aaron, your brother be your prophet, right? And then when Moses is not back after the time, 40 days or whatever, they think he disappeared, they said, let us make us gods. Let us make us gods. You know what I mean? They're using the same concept and idea. And a good point you made about this idea of that we say, is God, um, is God like, like all knowing? It doesn't really, on some levels, it doesn't say things like that. It says he knows what he knows, right? But these ideas, well, these concepts. My, my, my point is, right, is, is the religion that, that picks out these phrases and pops yes. them to people. Over, over yes, week. yes. So people who automatically believe certain things, right? But uh, they can be reading something else, but they don't notice the other thing what they're reading because they're already fixing it about what's going to go the internet. So... We have this idea that God is all going on our city. Even, even with Noah, it tells you with Noah that when Noah was, um, before Noah, instead of man was doing all these horrible things, and then it says, God repented that he created man. He said, repented. The, tran the, the, translation, yeah. the translator said that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no matter how you look at it, he ended up saying, come on, repented. No, that right is like a regretful. No, if you knew everything that was going to happen in front, you wouldn't make that regret. You wouldn't come in. Here. You understand? So these are the kind of things that what people do are the practical realities, and then there's what the religion has fed people. This this is the beautiful cycle and religion that even people who think that they're liberated from it aren't really liberated. They're still not thinking for themselves. They're still trapped in that cycle and that thought process. They're looking for the answers in a, in a process that's being given to them by the colonizer. But they think it's a liberated view. But a liberated view, you have to really go back to your ancient culture. You know what I mean? It, it, it bypasses religion to where we are as what the power is. We mm. bypass religion. We can't be judged on the same level as religion. Once you start getting into religion, it means that you're, you're shifting back. You're, you're not. You're not where you're supposed to be. You know what I mean? It's not that you, you don't carry religion within your midst and you understand it and it's part of it. You know what I mean? But it's not. It's spiritualism. Spiritualism is liberty. It's how you live. It's mm -hmm. you yourself and, and how you, you culture, how you practice the mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's everything. It's not, it's, it's, it could be, spirit can change. You can have a good spirit, a bad spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, when you read the, the book of um, 
Drew believes it talk about spirit of snow and spirit of water and spirit of frost. <laughs> it talk about all kinds of spirit. Yes, sir. <laughs> you so he's going with me to a spirit. It's like sometimes people don't go and call up. But they use it like it's one thing and it's not. Mm. You know, I mean, the tool is used. Right? But when you say it's true, the spirit can change. Different spirit jumping up at different times. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. They say when the spirit comes, they say when the spirit comes, ask him who sent you. Yeah, jump out of you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, no, no. The, the, I definitely correct on that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to even say it, say it like that, but what would you say about this being like something that that Jesus or Jesus Christ, according to what's written, says, um, um, be like in the world, not of the world, or oh, that comes out from the New Testament. Be in the world, not of the world. Right now, we deal with the spirituality in our life, our liberty. And like you said, understanding what religion is or having that in themselves if they choose to, you know, or a certain systemic way they look at things or rites and rituals they do. But now when we're defending the rights of our brothers against and sisters against the Babylon system, what would the I say about using, I can say, be wise as serpent and harmless as dove in the sense of, though we know we deal for spirituality, yeah? But if we have to like defend a one right, say incarcerate or something like that, by saying religion, by using that because the Babylonian understand that, you know, like they say, God come down from on high, right? He's he's up high and he looked down low. We're in a higher height if we truly are practicing Rastafari, the spirituality in the full sense of our life, our liberty. But in to raise one from down low, and we have to use those kind of weapons or those devices to help our brother or sister, what sayest thou on that? Like, you know, we say the Babylon religion, but we know it's, it's spirituality. <laughs> you see, when you're looking at spirituality, is the best form of defense. I think that it's not. I think humanity is the best form of defense. See, so right. therefore I would, have to apply, I would have to apply to humanity. Or they would say human rights. Because you have to be careful sometimes that it's not the thing that you say is is because they understand it. It's actually them give it to you. It's mm. them who the ones that practice you up and tell them that you're a religion. They already know that if they practice you up and get you believe you are a religion, you're gonna your behavior is going to change. You understand what I'm saying? So mm. they know that already. That's good but somebody point. Somebody can start you're a religion and then start believing, and then you start acting like a religion. When you start to act like a religion, you know more on that mission. The mission has changed. That, that, that's part of the problem. So mm. it's not that um, It's Good not point. really a problem. To, 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 we didn't need to. We didn't need to adapt ourselves to religion to get any rights. So, so what we've given us the rights. It's like it's like the one part of their their liberty that, that you know is the root of their problem. Why would we go to them to get rights? Mm. After them to recognize us. You understand? It's that a dangerous thing because then they they will set parameters for that recognition. And that's why that's why man started to move towards temples and having structured churches on this thing because those doctrines became because man became more religious. But when we wasn't religious, it was heaven was our roof. The earth is our mattress. We are one and two gathered together. He's present, right? And church is in you know, me and I'm the church. You know what I mean? So when two church meet God present and, and in a him name, it's church, whether it's outside, set up on street corner, or uh, hitch up anywhere. That's why we could farm church anywhere where we stand up and talk to people. Right, we didn't have to go one place to speak to people. We spoke to people in the community, right? We the community kept to us, or we still on the streets, right? Or we kept activities and spoke to the people. You know what I mean? So that's the church, right? We never see Jesus really recognizing that kind of temple neither. He was actually on the move, active. You know what I mean? His meetings was just anywhere where we land and people start chatting. You understand that was the church. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, I, 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 I think I think looking for recognition 
from somebody who you have as an oppressor. I think the movement did slip into that. I think the movement slipped into it before, before not older than us slipped into that mode. You know, I mean, that's not really our generation's fault, but it's mm. happened. I think the movement did slip into that kind of gear and want, and therefore the consequences of it is where we are today. Good point. No, that's yeah. a good point. I, I, I really take that on because many times we have, you know, from LOJ or even from Ayabingi, Nayabingi, certain gatherings have, you know, written to the so-called authorities for, you know, an incarcerated one, especially one incarcerated for like a quality of life thing. You know, like like it's not like it's not like uh, pedophilia or rape or even murder, but it might be, you know, it might be... Um, um, what they call trafficking, allegedly. You know, when them things were like more in effect. But what you're saying about human rights is interesting because I had to kind of just run and grab the Universal Declaration of Human Rights when you mentioned humanity is a better defense. And this connects with a bigger picture of who Haile Selassie is, even from the religious books, like the Judeo-Christian Coptic religious books, you know? It says that when the Messiah come, he would teach the nations... 30 precepts that are based on Torah or based on his like directions, instructions, you know, that's what Torah is. And here it has this right here, article 20, 27 rate. Is it, is it 27? Which one is the one on, on, um, on, on, okay. Yeah. Article 18. It says everyone has, listen to the language here, right? Uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, it says. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief. And freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. So when you mention defending humanity many times when ones and ones say well i and i seek to keep my locks i seek to eat a certain way of eating you know what i mean i often would add this to the to the defense and many times this right here from the you know, it's funny that i read that mm. it's funny you read that you know mm. because it made me just i heard something and it made me that i you, you, you emphasize two things. You said religion and beliefs, right? And and really, Rastafari is a belief more than it is a religion. And and I think that mm. we was coming up under the belief thing. The system was allowing us an understanding of our existence, right? It being a whole cultural thing with you know with certain type of different aspirations from what you would call a normal mainstream religion. You understand? And they, they understood that. I think somehow we jumped into religion, in, into the religion camp, whereas we were safer in the belief camp. And, and that means we have the right to believe. The right to believe doesn't necessarily mean that we need to practice ourselves as a religion. Mm. We, could, we could move under the umbrella of we're a belief. We have a belief. Because we're like a culture. It's more than, it's more than just, you know, uh, it's a point well, you made. Is it... A religion only takes people as far as them need to pray, practice certain kind of things, you know, certain kind of um, exercises, and go to choirs and do certain things. Right? A belief is we we got belief that in about going back to Africa, connecting with our culture, um, certain um, compensation, repatriation, reparation. We've got a whole heap of other things going on. <laughs> in, yes, in our, in our, in our, you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, if you yeah, really yeah. look at what religion is, what it actually addresses in a person, as how they would define religion, it's 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 about that worship, going to the church, or going, you know, reading your Bible at home, or practicing the exercises that they give you, you know, participating in that that, yeah, that I, realm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But right. our thing mm. is is that and, and, and multiple other things. As well, you know what I mean. So we 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 we're kind of bigger than religion in a sense. Well, you're right. You know what you're, I mean. You're right because it says religion, and they keep emphasizing. Not to cut you, I think three times or two times here, they keep mm -hmm. emphasizing twice. It says religion change his religion or belief. So that means that mm -hmm. you don't have to qualify it as. And I get your point because religion 
While you were speaking, I was thinking, Chan, the brother right. It's like when we say religion, it's like we start even using that the, the, that word in English. Not talking about what it means in Amharic or Hebrew or nothing, but in English. We're not playing the game in English because we're speaking to these people in English. We're not speaking to them in Hebrew or Amharic. That's their meaning. Exactly. But when we say religion, we start to get into their sandbox. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. We we start exactly. to like make ourselves less. Exactly. You know what I mean? And even when we use the word belief, though, on a certain level of maybe some rosters might bun the the belief because of a word play. But what belief really means yeah, is. Man, really when I'm talking about a man can burn. A man can burn if everything is in the fire. <laughs> it's a even more precious goal of the testing in the fire. But you don't mind if my one burn things, but in reality, what I'm saying is... I get you, I get you, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> what, it, what, it, what it believes does, it doesn't box you in. You're right, that's that's what I picked up, that's what I picked what, up, what yeah. It, it gives you scope to be whatever you are, <laughs> kind of thing, you know what I mean? Whereas when you say religion, it boxes you in immediately. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then people start to question you. When you say you believe, if they don't really know too much about it, you know, and they say, oh, you believe in Haile Selassie? Okay. I think you can wrap up with long hair. I don't think I'm a rascal. Because man turns into a religion. You have to accept them. Oh, boy. You have to accept anybody. You can't, you can't categorize a... Uh, uh, you know, true, true, so true, it, true. You can't, you can't say I don't, I don't religion in you, but you can say I don't believe you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You, you know, you can always. Yeah. <laughs> but if you say yeah. religion, you're right. Then a man come with long hair, and you say, okay, long hair is the religion. You know what I mean? Then it becomes like yeah. long hair man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, in, it's part of your religion. You know? Yeah, yeah, because he got the long hair. <laughs> True, 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 true. Well, that's a point right there. That's why I looked at that article 18. I told all ones and ones, because we always talk about Rasta man say human rights. Because that's nothing that Rastafari and our elders, we need to credit them for, is that in the music and other ways, they kept the idea, the seed of human rights there. Now, many of us are able to go look it up, read it, and read through what it say and say, yeah, man, this is the thing. This is the thing that we should be operating from. You know what I mean? On all levels when it comes to our, like, I don't want to say politics. I'm not saying politics, y'all. I'm saying politics. You got to understand politics and politics is two different things. You know what I'm saying? But it's the policies. Like, what policies? We want policies for a Rastafari to be a Rastafari according to their beliefs or faith or credit or whatever. You know what I mean? Without Babylon interference. So definitely, man. You see, with that too, that's another good point. Wait a minute, which is what we were talking about earlier. Um, trying to define Rastafari, part of the belief is that you can't define it. <laughs> I, I, so, yes, I. <laughs> you have all these different types of people who call themselves Rastafari. I don't care how you think you define it. Still find people of the idea of what them have them idea of. Mm, that's a good point. The only thing we can do is maybe give a general definition of the word sound, Ras to far eye, which can mean head or self to be feared or self to be respected or head to be respected. You know what I mean? And even within that, you can educate people, right? You can educate people, but everybody wants to educate them. Mm. But to say that you went to look up how it is, it's difficult. Oh, because you can tell you something, somebody ever tell you something. But what you can do is give a good practical idea mm. that covers as much as scope as possible. And then when people read it or listen it, they learn from it because it, you know, it's covering a lot of things that they probably haven't thought about. That's good. That way, you that's know, good. That's people good. educate. Thank you. so you're right. I mean, no, that's good. That's a good point. Good point, brother. That's a good iron sharpened iron. That's a good. 
this is really like a groundation, like, you know, like a yeah, week. Because if, if we look at it the other way, we look at it coming because it will just end up as we'll talk, talk, and somebody will tell us that. You know, we don't you know, have to talk that. We don't agree with that. This and that. This <laughs> right, that I, 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 you know what I mean? You get into that. But I, if you can put something together that covers a lot of conversations, then it will at least give people opportunities to think about if they've heard something new, what they hadn't thought about before. You're right. Or they really do understand or not. Or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They educate mm -hmm. like that. But if you try to say you're going to lay it out how it is. No, 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 no. You're that, right. You're right. You're right. When you said is. Well, when you said is, I remembered his Majesty's speech before the, the United Nations. When he said that peace is not an is, but it's a becoming. It's based on the mm -hmm. decisions, the day to day decisions that we make. You know what I mean? How peace is not an is. So when you said it's not to say what it is, you know what I mean? On that level, that really resonated with I, but to educate the people. And then even when you educate and you share with them some of what you are able to um, share and learning, they can reason on it and develop their own, we can say beliefs or their own, you know, what they accept to be true. You know what I'm saying? Or they can apply. Because the, the beauty of the rest of our, that every man is you know what I mean? Mm. So, there isn't really, it's, it's an acceptance of people going to church. It can be 50 people sitting in the church. All of them say that they're orthodox. They go to the church and they sit there and they do the prayer and everything. Every single one of them have a different idea in their head, really, privately. Mm. Right? Privately, everybody have a different idea. They might have similar ideas, but they have some different ideas as well. Right? But that becomes private. Sometimes it's not even in line with the way you go in that way. Mm. Right? You can find that in every religion. People can go in the mosque and 200 men can be in there praying. Each one of them have their own idea, even though there's similarities and crossovers and things that they firmly agree on. There'll be things that privately people have their own idea. They're never speaking. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's really when you get, and that's that's what Rastafari is really. It, it it has the ability for people to have their own idea, and then you can reason, right? And people, it's never you're never fixed. Mm. You're fixed, but you're not fixed. If you know what I mean, your mind's still open, but you still have your idea, right? And then outside of that, then then is the broader mission. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. things, things that you should be doing, trying to make business hustles, make money, do things, you know, get help people, set up things, support young people, do things like extra that we do. But the other part of it, we can meet and have a different idea, slightly, or uh, very much. Mm -hmm. so then people reason. It's by reasoning. The thing is nowadays, people don't really reason. When we was growing up, we reasoned. We had to, you had to get in there with man and, and settings. Or if you wasn't sure or something, you sitting next to an elder, and you know you're going to get rough up, or you're going to feel frightened to say something, and, and, and they're going to tell you it's too big. That's what I'm saying, or something. And so you had to have the confidence then to pluck up to ask the question, and so on and so forth. Mm. Or then you know, sometimes, sometimes you just ask the question. Or you take the opportunity when, when you're around elders to, to talk to them, ask questions so you can learn things. Some people go around old people and just sit down and don't say nothing to them. Even your parents, if you sit around them and keep asking questions, you learn a hell of a lot. Yes. You know, <laughs> but, but, that, true, that's, true. That's, that's my kind. Of, I learn to learn from people drunk and are mad people. I stand up and listen to them if I can. I mean, I'll be talented to a certain degree to listen. Because I might hear them say something that I didn't know, I didn't understand. You see what I'm saying? Mm. It's mm. a kind of funny thing. Um, let, me, let me ask something then. In um, a lot of places, you read that um, the Rastafari movement started um, in the coronation of, him, of, of His Majesty Emperor Elisilasi on November 2nd, 1930. But wasn't it, um, like we say in America, that um, before he was crowned, 
that there was a Rastafari movement already in America moving. That was in what, 1928 or something like that, 28? Can, eh? can I say something on this? Just for a moment? Yes. My brothers, um, I've been looking for this book. It's called Prowess, Piety, and Politics. It's by uh, Gabriel Xavier Elias and I think, um, I don't know where this other guy, Rudolph, Redolph K. Mauveyer. It's something that I shared before, and it's it's dated, I think, 1921 GC, Gregorian calendar from 1921. And it's about three different testimonies from the 1920s of different Ethiopians. I think they might be monks or priests, some of them Deptera, others that said St. Michael's Church. And they all are speaking of concerning Rastafari Haile Selassie, right? And what what I see here is that this kind of messianic or there's something special about this man. Like it says in Psalm 87, verse 4. In a psalm about Israel, it says, with Ethiopia, this man was born there. Actually, in the Hebrew, it says, this was born there. And in the Amharic also brings out this. So some of us look at that saying that it's a man, you know, a man is born, but this man is a man, but he's a little more than a man. So what I see here from the 1920s is already in Ethiopia with his majesty becoming um, Ras to Farai around 1916. This is where he was elevated and he took on these prerogatives of, of, of business and the government. So I would say that it came from Ethiopia, this, 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 this way of looking at his majesty where they might not have said, I'm a Rastafarian, but they were hailing him Rastafari, who would become known as Kedamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I, as someone special, not just for spiritual things, but also the practical things, how he was uniting and bringing things together and improving things and looking out for the little people and, you know, leveling things off. And then over in the Americas, there was that communication and there were ones like Reverend James Morris Webb back in the 20s, the black man. I think I heard the Obadiah, you mentioned that about the, about the book of the black man, um, Father of Civilization. And he had said something to the effect of, look to Africa where a black man will be crowned, um, where a black man will be crowned king. Let, let me get that exact quote right here. Here goes. It says, uh, yeah, perhaps some people confuse Garvey's ideas with those of Reverend James Webb, who in 1924, now I have a document from Ethiopia where a priest or somebody was declaring to Farai and the prince to Farai, he is like, and they're making this biblical kind of connection with his majesty, like in messianic terms. So now we have that going on in Ethiopia and simultaneously, right, in America, as well as I would say simultaneously, right, with ones like, um, who's the brother, um, they said the first Rasta, Leonard Percival Howell, Gangunguru Mara, were also proclaiming Rastafari. So what I'm trying to say is that it's like the Bible says, when the lightning shine from the east to the west. So I'm saying that some of us might say, well, it was first here in America. Some would say first it was in Jamaica. No, actually, it was like lightning. You know, if, if you're over there, you see the lightning, right? I'm over here. I see the lightning. <laughs> we all see the lightning. You know, and we're talking about this lightning. So I just share that right there with some of the evidence that in Ethiopia, and this is this is from a book that is hard to get. I was looking it up, and the book is very hard to get. But there's some there's some excerpts that somebody must who had the book scanned them and printed them out, where they're looking at His Majesty in in a kind of a messianic sense, but not just for spiritual reasons, but for the practical work that he was doing. And there was ones who are saying that look to look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king. In him, you'll find the redeemer. That's the way it was said by James Morris Webb. Marcus Garvey talks about the day of deliverance is near, right? Some say it's here, you know? So I just, I'm gonna pause on that right there, but just to share that kind of perspective that I see that simultaneous, like, like a big bang. It was a big bang, but the, but the bang started in Ethiopia. <laughs> not, uh, not so much on the what man said but on the point of um, his majesty in Ethiopia I, I, in during the 80s I was there and I was reasoning with a, 
a priest one of the times. He was having some long conversations. And um, he, he alluded to me that in the early days, in, within, Ethiopia, within Ethiopian um, doctrine, um, culture, there's a thing about the one, some special one who's going to come. And the, he, he said to me that when I say and think the same time when I speak about, people started to look at it, him as him. Right? And it carried on until I think I'm sorry, about the 1950s. And then said that the church moved and started to try to, you know, kind of stop the people from thinking like that. They must looking at the special life, like it was not just a normal thing. Right? And it, like the church stamped it out and, and got out of the belief, out of the belief. Terms of, you know, I'm sure we can see it like that, whatever way it go. But this is what it says. Interesting, guys, but I've not heard anybody else say that like that. I said what you just said. Um, but I remember that conversation I had with this priest, and he said that people used to call him the one. It was some kind of terminology for it. Mm. And they started to see the emperor as him, this, this, this one, this special one. And then it's like, it's like after a while the church got, got involved and says, like, man, oh, God, people stop, saying, stop thinking about it like that and dampen it out. But that's what this priest said to me, you know what I mean? That, that's, what, that's how it was. So it's clear that it was set up. It was it was set like that. The scene was set. It's not, it's not I and I can make up this, right? We just put it on international life. But, but we don't want it to be turned to a happy show either. You know what I mean? Because this, this thing was not a happy show. True, 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 so true. Some, it started to look like a happy show. Whereas it, this is a mission. You know what I mean? It's a mission from Ethiopia. And that's why, that's why it did go like that. People was already primed from melanic time. They was looking at melanic, melanic pretty special too. Mm. But they don't understand. People in America and certain parts, it's not just America, Caribbean and around the place. But even Africa, there was Ethiopian movements in South, South, Southern Africa and these places too, right? And um, a lot of Ethiopian churches had popped up and, and Abyssinian church and Ethiopian church. So there was a whole thing started, right, around that whole whole concept, and and they was on the move. They was the only independent country, and their, their people was moving into America, making visits into London, France. They was on the move mm. because they could do, do diplomacy. They had the excuse to move because they was a, they was moving as a nation, but the government of Ethiopia at the time moving as a nation was moving to the people in these places. It was moving to the government, but it was also moving to connecting with the people. So the Ethiopian government always connected with the people outside of Ethiopia, as well as other governments. Mm. That's where that trend came from. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's why people went and second and so on and so forth, and then you're right, and then when the emperor came, now it's like them, them started to zone. From Melanie had already heated up the environment, but then it's like with him, it's like it's not just looking at this individual man as super important and where, the, you know, it's different from and going to things, and you know what I mean? Yeah. And and it, it moved to that level, it moved to another level, and then started to come out around him. Mm. And, and, and so on and so forth. See, and the Hebrews and all these did have a thing to it. The Black Baptist also, because Black Baptist was dealing with Black Christ, mm, right? True. The Mason type was there because the Mason type was dealing with with supreme being, right? The 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 the, the, the Hebrew was there dealing with Messiah. You understand? So there was all most of the Black movements had something in there in there that they could connect with the Emperor. Mm, that's true. That's true. But that's that, true. Most of them had it. That's why. That's where the Masonic thing came from. Is that? People that look on it like these Rasta people in Jamaica. But these was big wigs in America. Big black people them who was politicians, Republican senators and big people in New York and big people in the different states was was so, this movement and never come up around and small people. So it's like the, it, it, it's almost like the Rastafari kept that original almost like gospel or that message, that black liberation that had a spiritual 
component to it, Message Alive. It's almost like you said, the, the 50s is when it started to kind of like change a little bit. And this is also the same time as Rastafari, I say the current of it, started to really reach far and wide in a great way. You know, from the 50s, getting into the 60s, the music and, you know what I mean? And the 70s. So it's like Rastafari keep the message becomes almost like a kind of a voice, you know, you know, of, of, of some of those principles of the movement. Like when we look at the music, a lot of the roots, reggae music, though it may have a spiritual component, it also has that revolutionary, that change, that, that love, that coming together, black people, Africa. You know what I'm saying? The message is very strong, you know, there as well. You know, even with Naya Bingi, some of the tunes, the, the churchical, when you said churchical, bongo, wato, and others, the churchical tunes, if you notice, a lot of those were basic Negro spirituals that were chanted by black people from generations before, that the Rastafari basically... Let the uh, drop off. Hmm? Let the place drop off. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. We're about to even bring this to a kind of a a, 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 a fulfillment here. I don't know if it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I guess he can actually come back on because on his phone it should still be showing. You know what I mean? It still, it still should be showing that there's the access there, so... Maybe if you come. Oh, that's his full day. Well, yeah, unless yeah, the power, the power go out on that thing, yeah. But yeah, man, yeah, man. I mean, this is still a good reason, man. And just to kind of just seal it up, maybe seal it up, and and maybe even pick up from where we, you know, just pick up in the in the yeah, vibes. Yeah, this is the first of many. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm there. I was gonna call my when the brother mentioned. I want to say for the record when he mentioned, and hopefully he get to hear this. He mentioned um, um, reasoning. I, I just had on the screen Roots of Rastafari, and I was thinking about the title that I call it. You say, All Things Rastafari. And when I heard the I say it from the beginning, I said, yeah, I'm going to keep that in mind right there. That's what we should call it. All Things Rastafari. Then, all things Rastafari. then, then right before the mind said it, I said, All Things Rastafari um, Reasoning. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he talked about how important reasoning is and reasoning was. You know, because, yeah, man, yeah, because I even had brothers like, you know, Brother Vaughn Benjamin to even reason with. You know what I mean? But mind and mind have to have a, a, a reasoning, someone to reason with. You know, another Rastafari, hopefully somebody who has tried it. And, and though none of us are perfect yet, Still, that one can help, you know, take the fire because all things are perfected. It's important. Yeah. yeah. It's important, you know, for iron to sharpen iron, whichever level you should be on, you know, to just hold a reasoning. You know, you never know where the reasoning going to go and what's going to come out of the reasoning. True. You know, and the beauty about that reasoning is it's, it's a respecting, you know, and it's, a, and it's a beautiful thing amongst the Rastafari community that we have the respect amongst each other that we can sit and reason and and accept another man's view that's different from yours or another man's opinion that's different from yours and just see where the man coming from you know and even though you might not agree with certain things that somebody else you know might say yeah i have a point of view and you're mature enough to understand that that's you know each man have his difference between us we can all be apples you know <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, we can, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, even if a man don't don't have your same exact view or what not, respect that man view same way, you know, and let he have his his you know his view. Ah, uh, true. You know, you don't have to try break down that man view and try get an argument to the man. No, it's mm -hmm. a reasoning, and the man show you his his vibe where he dealing with. You accept that, and you know, yeah, and have, you know, and we build. Yeah, so you say come. Oh, so this is the beauty about our reasoning. Yeah, come let me reason. Yeah, yes, come, yeah, 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 let me reason. So yeah, man, yeah, man. Um, so yeah, we're gonna seal this up right here. That was brother o o Obadiah that that was that was on the call with I and I. Now we have Ross, Simon, I Ross, I Don is here. So yeah, man, we're gonna seal this right here, and um, yeah, we're gonna seek to put this up a ASAP as well. You know, just for the ones and ones that can't receive it because um. Hopefully they'll start ones and ones, start reasoning with their brother in and have that love and respect, you know. And 
Of course, the fire when necessary, because you know the fire only makes that which is valuable, you know, like better, like it, in terms of yeah, purified. Yeah, yeah, purified. yeah, like the fire purifies it. So yeah, man, it's a spiritual <laughs> fire. We're not talking. We're not talking. Talking literally. We're talking spiritually. No. So with ones that can overstand the fire spiritually, reason. <laughs> you get it? With ones who can overstand the fire spiritually. You know what I mean? Then reason, reason. Right. You know what I mean? Man who don't, well, yeah, hopefully they they come up. <laughs> but yes, I, yes, I. So we're going to seal this, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Look forward to the next installation of this reasoning. So let's say guidance and attention to everyone. Yes, Always man. have a blessed day, evening, uh, rise, wherever you may be at at this time. As we bless you in the name of His Majesty, Exhibia Karamawi, Ayli, Selassiei, Isinja, Rastafari, Yes, I, Yes, I, Roots of Rastafari, Yes, I, 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 give thanks, my brother, give thanks. Yes, just vibes in everything Rastafari reasoning. Aye, 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 aye. Shalom, Rastafari. Yes.